Some of you are too busy swimming in the pool when you need, you need to be swimming in the ocean. Some of you are too busy swimming in the pool, which is a controlled place, all right? There's no danger. There's nothing dangerous about a pool when you need to be swimming in the ocean where the waves of the currents are fighting you and the currents are pulling you back. Come on. Stop fighting against the current of what God's doing in your life and just surrender. Thanks for uh, logging on right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak over you fire, power, glory, blessings, virtue, momentum, movement by the hand of God. Will you prosper? Amen. So listen, I want to give you some secrets to the supernatural today. Uh, one, uh, you know, I, I love Sid Roth. You know, he always says, you know, uh, where it's naturally supernatural. You know, uh, supernatural is the natural thing. And who knows that you are a spirit being. You're not necessarily a human being. Okay. Uh, we are spiritual vessels with earth and suits all right even though we're living in the earthly realm even though we're here on planet earth you know we're actually living from a place we're living from a dimension and uh you know we're living from a realm and uh you know today i want to i want to talk about uh some secrets to the anointing and some secrets to the supernatural okay i want to give you some keys and principles today about understanding secrets to the supernatural because i'm believing that god is moving on the earth but we need to partner with him we need to allow with him and not only that but when we partner and align with him then um, different dimensions will be opened up to us all right different things will be unlocked to us okay it's not a secret anymore okay Jesus is king it's not a secret anymore all right he wants to reveal it and who here knows that that our king will reveal his secrets uh, uh, to his friends he will reveal his secrets to his friends so today I want to talk to you uh, I want to give you some secrets to the supernatural okay and the reason why a lot of people are not receiving the secrets of the kingdom not receiving the secrets of God is because they're not staying in the realm of rest and they're not remaining friends okay when you and I are in intimacy with the Lord when you and I are close to the Holy Spirit when we are one with God come on it's not about unity but it's about oneness it's not about unity it's about union but when you and I are one with God with the Holy Spirit then there are no secrets that are held back from us okay it's so funny it, 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 that most people you know they're surprised Surprised by you, okay? Uh, listen, I'm about to teach and preach that, okay? I feel it coming. You know, uh, it's some people are so shocked and surprised by you. Wow, Ben, you made it. Wow, Ben, you made it in ministry this far. Wow, Ben, you know, I can't believe you're still around. I can't believe you survived that trial, that fire. Devil, oh, please, you better shut your mouth. All right, all right. so a lot of people, they're shocked and surprised because the Holy Spirit didn't reveal who you were to them. Most people are shocked and surprised because they actually wanted you to fail rather than wanting you to prosper. So when they see that you're actually prospering, when you when they see that you're actually still around and you're not down and uh, you know, you're actually resurrected, come on somebody, and you're actually ascending to different realms of the Spirit. So most people are are shocked and they're surprised because they're actually not one or they're not friends with the Holy Spirit. Who am I talking to today? Okay, because when you are a friend of God, not only do you see potential, but you begin to partner with the seed of prosperity. You begin to partner with the seeds. Okay, a lot of people will put you down because you're not a tree in their perspective. But when people are in the spirit and when they're one with God, God will share his seed secrets with those uh, to whom he loves, okay? He will share his secrets, okay? And I'm telling you right now that there are so many powerful men and women of God that are not known, that are hidden, but God will share them with those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Come on, people of God. Do you not know that there's so many people, big names, people of influence uh, that are famous, but they don't know how to bring heaven down because all they have is a platform, not power. Just 
just because you have platforms doesn't mean you're moving in power. Okay, there's there's, there's a big difference with, with influence and power and authority. And just because you're influential doesn't mean you have an authority. Just because you're influential doesn't mean that you have power. Okay, come on. Popularity does not equal power. Many times we as human beings, we clap and we applause the things that are popular, but that doesn't mean that it's popular in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I want to be popular in heaven. I want to be famous in heaven. I don't care if I'm a no name, if I'm a nobody, if I'm hidden forever on earth, but I want to be famous to the angels. I want to be famous even to the principalities. I want to be famous. Come on, Rabbi, I want to be famous in the heavenly realms. And today, I want to talk to you about some secrets of the supernatural, okay? Because uh, when you are a friend of God, nothing is hidden. Nothing is held back. Nothing is withheld. When you are a friend of God, then he will reveal his secrets to those who fear him. He will reveal his secrets to those who are friends with him. So, you know, there's so many people who come up to me and they're like, wow, Ben, you made it. Wow, Ben, uh, you made it this far. Wow, Pastor Ben, I can't believe you. Well, I'm like, well, uh, did the Holy Spirit not show you something? Or, or, or were you too busy judging me? Or were you too busy partnering with the accuser of the brethren? Were you too, oh, come on now. Were you too busy partnering with the accuser of the brethren? Is that why you didn't see the potential of God, the seed of hope of glory on my life, okay? So, so many people will come up to you and they'd be like, wow, I'm so happy you made it. But you're like, you're two-faced. You, 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 you're wearing a good Christian mask, aren't you? You're two-faced. They'll applaud you in your face in public. And they'll be like, wow, you made it. I'm so happy for you. When they actually curse you behind your back. When they actually curse you in, in the public place or in their inner circles. And listen, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will reveal his secrets to those whom he loves. And I want to tell you right now. That you are God's best kept secret. Okay. You are God's best kept secret. And I'm telling you right now, 2020, it's the year, the decade of manifestation of appearance. Okay. People are going to begin to behold who you are in the spirit and in the natural. Okay. But God is about to reveal you on the earth in a whole new way, in a whole new dimension. I'm telling you now that God is rebranding you. God is representing you. God is going to show you off. Okay. You are God's best kept secret here on the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to just pray to that before I go into my, my quick teaching today. Father, I thank you for so many people watching now live and on the replay that they are, they are your best kept secret. They are your best kept secret and that's why you've kept them hidden. You've kept them a secret for so long because if God revealed you too quickly then people could have killed you back then. If God revealed you too quickly then people could have crucified crucified you years ago. But the reason why God kept you a secret for so long is so that he would keep you safe. Come on, somebody. He kept you a secret so that he could keep you safe, so that he could prepare people for the right time and for the right season. Father, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will release justice, you will release payback, you will release power, and you will release revenue over my friends right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So right now, I want to give you some secrets to the supernatural. Okay, I want to give you some secrets to the supernatural. First and foremost, we're going to go to the Word of God. Okay, I want to go to the Word of God. Give me some hearts and lights and let me know where you are watching from. Let me know where you are watching from. 1 Kings 19.11. I want somebody to type this down here for me. 1 Kings 19.11. Okay, the Lord said to Elijah... The Lord said to the prophet Elijah, okay, the Lord said to the prophet Elijah, and welcome to all of those who are logging on or watching now. The Lord said to the prophet Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain of the presence of the Lord. Okay, I'm, I'm going to help you, for the Lord is about to pass by, all right, remember, where you stand determines uh, your breakthrough. Where you are right now determines the realm of revelation you're about to receive. Where are you standing right now? That's why many times, uh, you know, I need to come out of a physical location to receive fresh revelation. 
The reason why many of you are not receiving fresh revelation is because you're still in a same uh, location. When you change locations, you will begin to change the stagnation that's on your life. And when you change locations, you will begin to receive fresh revelation. Where are you standing right now? We must stand before the counsel of the Lord. All right. The Lord said, go out and stand on a mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Amen. Come on now. You will not miss your divine appointment. You will not miss it when the Lord begins to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind, someone say wind, tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. No, no, no. He was not there. No, no, no. He was not in your last season. No, no, no. He was not in this conference. No, no, no. After the wind, there was an earthquake. Someone say earthquake. Okay, come on. I'm feeling a preach right now. After the wind, there was an earthquake. Someone say earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. Someone say fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, whew, came a gentle whisper. My gosh, my gosh. And when Elijah, verse 13, when Elijah heard the gentle whisper, he wrapped his face in his cloak. And went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. At the mouth of the cave. Hear me now. The mouth of the cave, which is the entrance of the cave. Here's the cave. He stood at the mouth. Come on, what is this year? 5, 7, 80, 80, pay the year of the mouth, the decade of the mouth. He stood at the mouth of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I believe many of you watching right now, we are in a moment on the 10th day of the new year, 2020. We are in a moment where God is saying, what are you doing here? God is saying, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing in this moment? What are you doing here? I believe right now, the Lord is saying, I want you to come out of the cave. I want you to stand at the edge of the mouth. I want you to come and meet me in this place. Elijah came to the mouth of the cave. Come on, somebody. Elijah came to the mouth of the cave and he responded. Someone say responded to the gentle whisper. God was not in the wind that tore up the mountains. God was not in the earthquake and God was not in the fire. Do you see that that uh, that order right there? Okay, I'm going to teach a little bit and then I'm going to give you secrets to the supernatural. Okay, uh, do you see that there was a progressive order right there? First, there was the wind that tore things apart. Secondly, was the earthquake that began to shake things, and then thirdly, there was the fire. Okay, and, and many people right now, you've been going through this progression of stake. You've been going through this time where the winds are tossing you to and fro across the earth, where the winds are are moving you all around, and you don't know where you're going. Am I helping somebody here? Number two, many people feel like they're going through the shaking of their life, where a foundation is shaking, where things feel like it's crumbling. God's destroying the foundation right under your feet. And then number three, there's a fire, because a fire stands for the purging. Many people watch right now, you're like, man, I'm going through a purging right now. I'm, I'm going through a refining. I'm feeling the fire of the Holy Ghost. But you see, you hear me now, you see that there's a progression. There's these three st steps that God revealed himself to Elijah, but only one thing moved his heart. It was the gentle whisper. Someone say gentle whisper. I believe right now God is about to ignite your heart. He's about to strengthen your heart with a gentle whisper. Come on, somebody. He's not in the conference, even though conferences are great. He's not in the crusade, even though crusades are great. He's not in the church meeting, even though churches are great. But he's in a secret place. He is in the still small voice where it's just you and him, him and you. No other crowds, no other agenda, no other intentions. What is he saying to you in his time, in his moment, in the mighty name of Jesus? Someone say amen. Listen, I believe right now the Lord is amplifying the gentle whisper. What does that mean? He's amplifying the quietness of the soul. Many times for me, um, many times for me, I will get a breakthrough whenever uh, uh, whenever I'm in a, in a place of stillness. Someone write down stillness, okay? Of course, Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still, for, and you will know that I am the Lord, for I will exalt my name 
and the earth, all right? Stillness. Someone say stillness. And one thing I realized is that stillness is supernatural. One thing I realized is that stillness is supernatural. And I believe right now that God is amplifying the supernatural on earth, okay? Uh, so God is amplifying the supernatural on earth on earth as it is in heaven but you need to be in a place of being still with him okay and right now i want to give you keys okay i want to give you secrets to the supernatural and this is going to help you greatly amen if you're excited about this someone say amen okay i, I want to give you these keys right here that i wrote down okay i want to give you two keys excuse me three keys i could actually give you more but for the sake of time i want to give you three keys okay and maybe i'll give you the rest later but three keys to the secrets of the supernatural. Number one, okay, it is stillness. Someone write down stillness, okay? Many times I won't get fresh revelation. I will not get breakthrough in my own heart until there's stillness. Whenever I teach about the anointing, about the glory, I'll many times say that the highest level of his power, of his presence is stillness. Okay, whenever you climb a mountain, okay, whenever you climb a mountain, when you come to the top of the mountain or the higher you ascend, the higher you go to the top of the mountain, the more still it is. All right, there's nothing bothering you. There's nothing flying around, okay? All right, come on. All right, when the higher you go, the more still it is. And, and I believe right now God is bringing us to a place of stillness because his stillness is a supernatural. Okay, his stillness is supernatural, okay? Um, when, whenever you're face-to-face -face with God, whenever you're face-to-face -face with the Lord, with the King, uh, many times, uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, uh, be in awe. You know, uh, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, you know, stand in awe of the Lord. Let your words be few. All right, you guys hear me? If you're with me right now, give me some hearts and likes. Let your words be few. Stand in awe of the Lord. Let your words be few. And, and many people, they're too busy babbling. They're too busy in the second heavens. They're too busy trying to bring to God your prayer requests. You're too busy trying to, uh, uh, trying to convince Jesus. When God is saying, you know, uh, uh, just let it all cease. Let it all go. And just come face to face with me in my stillness. Where there's no distraction. Someone say amen. All right. And it's the stillness of God. Let me message this person. Where there's no distractions. And you're in the stillness of God. And it's just you and him, him and you. And you don't have to worry. Okay, you don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to try to conjure up something, okay? And whenever you're, you're resting in him, you will have new strength. Whenever you're resting in him, you will have new power. Whenever you're resting in him, you will have new mercies. Come on, am I helping anybody here today in the mighty name of Jesus? Whenever you are resting in the King Jesus, you will have new power, new strength, new grace, new mercy. Because it's not you that's trying to conjure something up anymore, okay? Who here knows that it's more fun when he's doing it? Who here knows that it's more fun when Jesus is leading you? When Jesus begins to show up right now? Who here knows that it's more fun when the Holy Spirit begins to lift you up and he begins to raise you up, all right? So my first secret to the supernatural, well, number one, is stillness, okay? Someone say stillness. I believe right now in this season, God is bringing peace to your soul. He's bringing shalom to your spirit, man. Rabo Shabbat, he's bringing stillness in the mighty name of Jesus. The gentle whispers of the Holy Spirit, all right? Amen. Number two, uh, the second secret to the supernatural is surrender. Someone say surrender. All right, the more the more of God you want in your life, the more you need to surrender, okay? The more Jesus, the greater levels of power, the, great, or the more you need to surrender. That's why people fast. That's why people consecrate themselves. That's why people separate themselves. That's why people, uh, you know, uh, you need to live an obscure life if you want the power of God to rest upon you. So the secret, the second secret to the supernatural is surrender. What does that mean? Let go of your agenda. Let go of your ideology. Let go of how you think. Come on. You just need to let go and let God stop trying to control, okay? And when you let go of control, you actually become a child. 
When you let go of control, you actually become a child, which means that you surrender and you trust in daddy and you trust in papa. Come on now. When you let go of control, you become a child and you surrender to the still small voice of the Lord. You surrender to the strength, to the power of God. And you surrender and you surrender to the, to the current of the waves. Do you know when whenever you go swimming in the ocean, okay? Some of you are too busy swimming in the pool when you need, you need to be swimming in the ocean. Some of you are too busy swimming in the pool, which is a controlled place, all right? There's no danger. There's nothing dangerous about a pool when you need to be swimming in the ocean where the waves of the current are fighting you and the currents are pulling you back. Come on. Stop fighting against the current of what God's doing in your life and just surrender. Just surrender. If God says you're meant to be a man of God, just surrender. If God says you're meant to be a prophet, just surrender. If God says you were meant to do this thing, just surrender. Stop fighting against his will and stop making it hard on yourself. Just surrender to the waves, to the currents of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is the second secret to the supernatural. And every season, there's a, a different level, different type of surrender. Every season, okay? There, I mean, I've had seasons in my life where I've had to surrender uh, my pride. I've had to surrender my reputation. I've had to surrender my schedule. I've had to surrender certain people, all right? Every season is a different type of surrender because every season God is dealing with a different issue and matter of the heart, okay? And if you want to grow in the supernatural, you need to surrender, you need to surrender to how you think God's going to do it. God's bigger. God's greater. All right. Number three. My last secret to the supernatural I'm going to give you today. Uh, um, because I don't want to go too long today. My last uh, is the scriptures. Okay. Come on, somebody. Is the scriptures. And I actually have seven secrets to the supernatural I just wrote down. But it's the scriptures. Someone say scriptures. Okay. It's the word of God. All right. It is the Word of God. It is the written Word. It is the Logos. And unfortunately, many people do not tap into the richness of His Word. Okay? You're too busy chasing the Spirit when we can find secrets in the Scriptures, in the words. We can find... I, I, I love what Bill Johnson says. You read until He speaks. You, you open the Bible, you open the Word, and you read until you feel His presence. You feel God literally breathe on that Word, and you expound. And you know, I'm a student of the Word. I love expounding on words, and that's how I gain fresh revelation. When I look at a Word, when I look uh, at, you know, at the context, when I look in the Hebrew, uh, when I look at the commentaries and at the Greek, and God will just begin to open up certain aspects of who he is in the scriptures. And I really feel like in this time, in this age, God is saying there's such an authority in the scriptures. And hear me now, right now. Okay, the reason why a lot of people don't have an authority is because they don't know the Bible. All right, they have influence because they have power and gifting, but they don't have authority because they don't know the word. Okay, God, uh, the Bible is the highest authoritative word uh, is a piece of paper legislation in the whole universe. It is by his word. It is the Bible, the written word of God. And, and the Lord wants us to be hungry for the scriptures. He wants us to be hungry for the written word. Come on, somebody can. All right. When you know what's available in the written word, then will you be able to manifest the living word? Only when you know what's in the written word will you be able to manifest uh, the living word. And God wants us to be hungry for the scriptures. And this, this is why that is a third secret to the supernatural. Because the Bible is not just a book, but it is a supernatural book. Okay, do you know how witches and Harry Potter and all these people, you know, they got all these witchcraft books. You know, they got these seances, you know. And you begin to repeat things, yada, yada. Oh, I wish I can. I wish I can. I think I can. I think I can. Oh, you know, and, and these witches and these Wiccans, and, you know, they'll begin to repeat these seances. Come on, somebody. All right. But when you begin to repeat the word of God, there's power, there's grace, there's glory, there's an anointing because there's secrets in the scriptures. 
Okay, there's secrets in the scriptures, and certain scriptures will reveal, uh, uh, will release angels. Certain scriptures will release power. That's why the devil does not want you to read the Bible. That's why the devil is trying to change uh, the Bible and different writings in the Bible. Oh, you can't say this because of that. Oh, you can't say this. Oh, no. They're trying to change the interpretation of it. Okay. But there's blessings attached to each promise, each word, each scripture, each line. There's blessings that are attached. And um, right now, I just gave you three secrets to the supernatural. Okay, I gave you three secrets. I could, I could give you more secrets here. But, you know, we're meant to live a supernatural life. What does that mean? It means that there's nothing natural about us, okay? You could have principles, and you could have a logic, and you could have good teachings, but that doesn't mean it's supernatural. Signs and wonders, the awe of God, the suddenlies of heaven, where you shake up, where you're having encounters with the angelic, you're having encounters with the realm of mystery. All right, I want these three keys, secrets to the supernatural. Stillness, someone say stillness. All right, stop letting your soul be so busy and dominate your spirit. Stillness, that's why Jesus had to separate himself to pray. Stillness, number two, surrender, amen? And number three, scriptures, the word of God. Shoot, secrets to the supernatural. Guys, on this 10th day of the new year, on this Friday, the Shabbat Shalom. Of course, Shabbat means the holy day, the most holy day. Shabbat is the ability to rest. It is the day when God rested. It is the day uh, of Shabbat when God himself stopped creating and he began to rest. Enter into that realm of rest and enter into that realm where God is going to do it. Okay. Be a child. All right. Be a son. Be a bride. Be a daughter. He loves you. All right, guys. Three secrets to the supernatural. I want you to write down below uh, what encouraged you, what spoke to you, what ministered to you the most. Okay. I want you to write down below what spoke to you, what ministered to you the most. But I believe in this season, the Lord is releasing stillness. Remember, stillness is supernatural. I'm telling you, the highest levels uh, of glory many times is the still small voice. He's not in the wind, he's not in the earthquake, and he's not in the fire. He's not in the conference. He's not in that prayer, he's prayer meeting. No. He, he's in the gentle whisper where you come out of the mouth of the cave. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Guys, bless you. This is Ben Lim Live. You're from Oregon. I just wanted to hop on and give you these three keys. Secrets to the supernatural. Do like and do share. Share, share, share. Love you guys. Blessings. Bye-bye.